New information has been released about the all new Tesla Model Y and the specs are interesting. In this video, we're gonna deep dive into those specs and we're gonna see why Tesla might be understating and underselling their new model. Let's start with what we know. The new Model Y all-wheel drive will be produced in Austin, Texas exclusively. It'll start at $60,000 and it will have a range of 279 miles as tested by the EPA. And this new variant features all the new technology that Tesla has been working on. It has the new 4680 cells and structural battery pack. So if you look at a side-by-side -side comparison with this new all-wheel drive variant and the existing long range variant, the specs aren't all that different. The range is 279 miles versus 330. The EPA is listing the curb weight as 4,365 pounds. We'll get to this a little bit later. And the official battery pack capacity is still unknown. So let's first take a look at the existing 2170 pack that is in the long range variant. And then we're gonna use that knowledge to predict the capacity of the new 4680 pack. And we're gonna see exactly what's going on here. The current Model Y long range uses the 2170 cell in all of its battery packs. The 2170 cell is 21 millimeters in diameter and 70 millimeters high, hence the name. And below is what the actual pack configuration looks like. Each dot represents a cell and there's a total of 4,416 cells. The pack's broken up into four different modules. In the first module, it has 1,058 cells. In the second module, 1,050 cells. And then that's mirrored on the other side for the other two modules. Total capacity comes out to 81 kilowatt hours. But what is the new 4680 pack gonna look like with a cell that's more than twice the diameter and five times the volume of the 2170 cell? To start, we're gonna use the rumored capacity of the new 4680 cell, which is 98 watt hours. And so we're just gonna do a simple calculation. We're gonna take the existing capacity of the 2170 pack, which is about 81 kilowatt hours and we're gonna see how many 4680 cells we need to create a pack with the same capacity. So we simply divide 0.098 kilowatt hours into the pack capacity, 81 kilowatt hours, and we see that we need about 827 of those new cells to get an 81 kilowatt hour battery pack. This is right online with some of the images that have come out of the Cyber Rodeo event that Tesla held recently. They had a few displays up, and in this display here, you can see 12 ribbons of hanging battery cells. And in each ribbon, there's 69 cells. And if you multiply 12 by 69, you get 828, which is one more cell than our calculation came out to be. And in this photo from the event, you can see an actual cutout of the structural battery pack. And you can see four modules with six rows of cells in each module or the same as 12 ribbons or 828 cells. So the math works out really well. You can make almost an identical pack to the 2170 pack that currently exists by using 828 4680 cells arranged just like it is in that diagram. If the cars are the same and the battery pack capacities are virtually the same, then why does this new variant have only 279 miles of range? So maybe the pack capacity isn't 81 kilowatt hours because we're not seeing 330 miles of range. Another possible configuration for the new 4680 pack is actually replacing one ribbon of cells on each side with some filler element. So instead of having 12 ribbons and 828 cells, we now have 10 ribbons with 690 total cells. And that would bring battery pack capacity down to about 67.6 kilowatt hours. But what about weight? Let's look at the 2170 pack real quick and then we'll get to weight of the new 4680 pack. So you've already seen this diagram before but I'm now putting on the screen the weight of each individual cell. So each cell weighs about 0.07 kilograms or 70 grams. If you multiply our number of cells, 4,416 by the weight of each cell, we see that the total weight in cells is about 309 kilograms. If you find the EPA test documentation for the Model Y long range, you'll see that they list the total battery pack weight at 450 kilograms. So this means that about 30% of the mass of a battery pack is actually not due to the cells, it's due to other components. And so I've gone ahead and listed the specific energies at a cell level and a pack level, as you can see on the screen there. So I'm about to set up a side-by-side -side comparison with the three pack diagrams we walked through. The first one is the existing 2170 Model Y long range pack. We already walked through all this. I'll put the specs on the screen. Next up is the 4680 pack that was actually shown at the Cyber Rodeo event with that cutout. It has 828 cells, a calculated cell weight of about 294 kilograms, and an unknown pack weight. 
Next up, we have the smaller 4680 variant at about 67 kilowatt hours. This has 690 cells. Cell weight comes down to about 245 kilograms, so almost 50 kilograms of savings. I've gone ahead and converted the 4680 pack variants into a nice concise table. We have capacity, cell weight, and a really rough calculation of range in the Model Y. We didn't talk about the 14 band version on the far right, which would be two more layers of cells. It looks like the 4680 pack can support another layer, as you can see the filler element that was in that cutout photo. And you can see what these capacities yield in terms of a rough range estimate. Okay, so we looked at the different pack configurations with the new 4680 cell, and they seem to line up pretty well with those leaked photos from the Cyber Rodeo event. Now we're gonna look at two much simpler methods to see if our pack size estimates line up. The first one is extrapolating battery pack capacity based on range. So we know the ranges, I've already talked about it earlier in the video. If we take the 279 mile range in the new variant, divide it by the 330 mile range in the existing car, we see it's about 84% of the range. If we multiply that 84% by the battery pack capacity, 81 kilowatt hours, we see that the pack should be about 68 kilowatt hours. This aligns pretty closely with our estimates from earlier. If you remember, our 10 band configuration came out to about 67 and a half kilowatt hours. So I'm gonna assume that they're using the 10 band configuration or they're using the 12 band and their software limiting the car to about 67 or 68 kilowatt hours. The third thing that makes me think the pack capacity is only about 67 kilowatt hours is from some recent EPA data. I will say the actual numbers they give for capacity, weight, and road load are pretty suspect, but we're gonna get to that at the end of this video. They did, however, post some interesting recharge event data, which basically means how much energy is pulled from the wall when they charge the car from zero to 100%. And so I compared that with the existing Model Y long range, and in the Model Y long range, that recharge event energy is about 92 kilowatt hours. And so I divided the usable pack capacity by the recharge event energy, and we see that charging efficiency is right around 88%. And in the EPA documentation, the recharge event energy for the new variant was only 76 and a half kilowatt hours. So assuming the same 88% charging efficiency, you can see that the pack capacity should be somewhere around 67 and a half kilowatt hours, which is right on line with the estimates from our first two methods. Let's talk about weight and see what the heck is going on here. So in the EPA documentation, they're listing the curb weight for the new all wheel drive variant at 4,365 pounds. That's only 16 pounds less than the current Model Y long range variant with over 14 more kilowatt hours of capacity. If Tesla used all of the existing technology and used the 2170 cell, no structural battery pack, just removed 14 kilowatt hours of 2170 cells, they would reduce the weight by 150 pounds alone. And if you look back to the Tesla battery day, they mentioned that the structural battery pack should reduce overall vehicle mass by 10%. So with all of these new improvements, the car should easily weigh under 4,000 pounds why are they listing the curb weight at 4,365 pounds? I think the reason why is because Tesla submitted some really generous data, meaning they completely overestimated their figures for road load and curb weight. Let's take a look at the EPA process and see why this might be the case. One of the metrics that manufacturers submit to the EPA is something called road load. You could think of it as the sum of the forces that are acting on the car to slow it down. And these forces are just rolling resistance and air resistance. So the manufacturer comes up with these road load coefficients in a number of different ways. They can do simulations or they can do real world testing. And they submit those coefficients to the EPA, which the EPA then uses to do their actual testing. So manufacturers decide what road load is for vehicles. And I'm going to show you why that's really important. So just to make this crystal clear, I'm gonna walk through an example. Here is a screenshot of the road load submitted for a Tesla Model S Plaid. We can see the three dynamometer coefficients, A, B, and C, and road load is equal to A plus BV plus CV squared, where V is the velocity of the car in miles per hour. So let's say you wanted to calculate road load at 60 miles an hour, you take your coefficients, so 29.64, plus 0.6164 multiplied by our speed, 60, 
plus 0.01 multiplied by 60 squared. You see that road load at 60 miles an hour is about 102 pounds, which means that there's 102 pounds of force acting on the front of the car to slow it down. Okay, so how does road load relate to the EPA test procedures? So when the EPA tests an electric vehicle like a Tesla, they're not actually driving it out on the road in real world conditions. What they're actually doing is putting it on something called a dynamometer where it actually simulates road load and they plug in coefficients into a computer to add resistance to those dynamometer rollers. So the simple steps are the manufacturer provides the road load coefficients, the EPA sets the dynamometer with those road load coefficients, and then the EPA goes through various driving cycles for city and highway in an enclosed room. There's a really simple diagram below where road load is being plugged into the dynamometer rollers and it's actually adding a resistance force to simulate the real world forces of aerodynamics and rolling resistance. And the reason I'm walking through all of this is to show that if a manufacturer decided to submit really, really generous road load data, so let's say they submitted road load forces that are 50% more than they are in the real world, when the EPA goes to do their test, they're gonna set the dynamometer to really high resistance and that car's range is gonna be much lower than it would be in the real world. And we've actually seen this before with the Porsche Taycan. Multiple media sources that tested it in the real world saw a much higher range than the actual EPA rating. To my knowledge, manufacturers are allowed to provide sandbag numbers or understated road load numbers to the EPA. They get into hot water when they provide over optimistic numbers because that would far overstate the range of the vehicle compared to the real world. And this actually happened with Hyundai and Kia Basically, they submitted road load information that was better than it is in the real world, resulting in an overestimate for their fuel efficiency. And so the EPA hit them with a massive fine. And there's a ton of other things that happened. I'll put a link in the description with all the details if you want to read about it. But my whole point in walking through this is showing that it's pretty easy for manufacturers to pass understated information to the EPA which will basically bring down the range estimates. So it can kind of give Tesla some leverage to make sure this new Model Y variant isn't too efficient and doesn't have too high of a range because they need to sell this new technology alongside their existing technology. I didn't put a disclaimer at the beginning of this video, but I figured I'd say it now. We won't know the actual specifications of the new Model Y variant until someone does a teardown. All of the theories I presented are based on the knowledge I know about the EPA and the knowledge I know of the new battery technology in the Model Y. So just take all of this with a grain of salt. It's really meant to be food for thought, not taken as factual information. Before I wrap up the video, I do want to hop over to the Motor Matchup Efficiency Simulator, and I'm going to show you how much range a 4,000 pound Model Y would get. On your screen here is the Efficiency Simulator. We have the 2022 Model Y all-wheel drive variant. You can see the usable capacity, 67.6 kilowatt hours, and we're doing 65 miles an hour right now, and we're seeing a projected range of 248 miles. This is roughly highway speed if you're going the speed limit. And what I'm gonna do now is add 400 pounds into the car, just like that difference we were talking about, roughly 4,000 pounds to 4,400 pounds. So if I up the weight, 400 pounds, we can see total driving weight is now 4,600 pounds the range drops down to 240 miles. So only about a 10 mile difference. But if we drop it back to city speeds, let's say 35 miles an hour, range goes up to 390 miles. And if I drop the weight back to our 200 pounds of extra, range goes up to 410 miles. And so you might be surprised to see that adding and removing weight doesn't change range all that much. What's really gonna affect range the most are the aerodynamic parameters of the car. We just went through a ton of content. I hope you got something out of this video. If you wanna check out the efficiency simulator, it's totally free to use on motormatchup.com. I'll put a link in a pinned comment below. Let me know what you think is going on with this new Model Y. Maybe the battery pack is software limited to 67 kilowatt hours. Maybe Tesla is adding weight into this car to make sure it's not too light. Let me know what you think they're doing in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time.